Hello all, welcome back to another video on the channel. For this video, we will be exploring the shortcut file for Windows, the LNK file extension type. We will be demonstrating how initial access is usually obtained via spear phishing or phishing, and how LNK files can be used to hack into Windows system on unsuspecting victims. This is a method that is commonly used by offensive security professionals and also criminal groups for gaining initial access into a target organization. We will also be looking at an article published by a researcher named Matthew, whereby he demonstrated how it is possible to embed the entire payload into the LNK shortcut file itself, which is really interesting and cool. So let's get started. Looking at the MITRE attack framework, we can see that LNK is indeed quite a popular way that many organized criminal groups use. LNK files are usually used as a first stage kind of delivery to the target, which the shortcut file, when executed, will proceed to download additional payloads onto the victim machine. Let's take a look at this Trend Micro article whereby some typical LNK file usage are shown. So the first example, LNK file downloads a JPEG file that is actually some PowerShell code and then process injection. The second example over here, the LNK file executes mshta.exe that will then execute some malicious JavaScript code, will download PowerShell scripts and then executes them. In the third example, a zip file that has a LNK file that will execute commands using built-in Windows binaries like CMD and PowerShell, which will then be used to download the actual payload. Pretty straightforward, I guess. It's quite easy to understand. So back to the x86 Matthew research. He basically embeds the entire payload file within the LNK shortcut file itself. And when executed, it will then carve out the payload exe file from the shortcut file and write it to the temp directory and then executes it. So in terms of opsec wise, it is not it is certainly not perfect, but nonetheless it is a very very interesting and cool research. I mean, damn, he embedded the entire payload into the shortcut file itself. So we will walk through how we can use and utilize his tool in this video later on as well. So let's get started now and it should clear things up more. So first, let's create a shortcut file now on our own Windows machine so that it's easier to visualize what we have been talking so far. Here, we created a shortcut file for Notepad. We can look at the properties of the shortcut file. Most importantly, what we are interested in is the target field. We should be able to modify the target field so that we can execute whatever we want. We can change the icon to keep the shortcut file appearance to be legitimate, like this notepad.txt file icon. So first, let's create a metabrita reverse shell for the proof of concept. We can do so using MSF Venom on our Kali attacking machine. So before we begin, one thing to note here is that for this video demonstration, the Windows Defender is turned off. This is to help facilitate the demo as it will be very time consuming to come up with bypasses. If you are interested in Windows Defender bypasses, feel free to check out my other videos. There are quite a few of them which I have demonstrated how Windows Defender can be bypassed. Okay, so let's start up a web server as well on our Kali box. It appears that I have already started the web server with Python, so that is cool. We have a web server running on port 80 on our Kali machine. Okay, now let's modify the shortcut file to execute some commands instead. Let's use PowerShell to perform a wget download of the metabrita reverse shell from our Kali machine and output it to this current directory. We should then execute the metabrita reverse shell exe file. So the full command looks like this. I have copied it out on the sublime text so it's easier to see. 
Okay, as soon as we apply the changes, we can see that the icon changed. Let's change it back to the notepad icon so that it will appear legitimate. Here, this looks better now. Notepad shortcut LNK file that will execute a PowerShell download command to fetch our Metapreter reverse shell and then execute it. Okay, so we can execute the shortcut file by simply double clicking on the notepad shortcut file. Let's close the command prompt. We can see that after executing the shortcut file by double clicking it, the 8443.exe Metapreter reverse shell is indeed downloaded. Now let's check out the listener on our Kali machine. As expected, we have a reverse shell on our listener. This is how offensive security professionals and criminal group hacks into target organizations. Of course, this is just a quick demo and example. It is usually much, much more complex and definitely we will not be using an EXE file as the main payload. Another thing to note is that the context can be made more convincing such as renaming the shortcut file to be something like password.txt file instead and perhaps we can also attach a password protected PDF file. So what this means is that if the victim tries to open up the password protected PDF file, he will be prompted to enter a password which he doesn't know. So the most natural course of action the victim will take next will be to double click on the password.txt file in an attempt to get the password and this will then trigger the initial infection and compromise the victim target machine instead. So it is really up to your imagination and creativity on how you can make the attack more convincing. Alright, so now we have a clearer understanding of how shortcut files can be abused to gain initial access onto victim machines. Let's give the Matthew research a try. It appears that the program is not available, so we need to compile the C code ourselves. So let's do that together. Okay, let's copy and paste the file and save it as lnkdemo.c. We can compile the C program on Windows by using the CL compiler. This should come together with Visual Studio. If not, install it manually. It appears that there are quite a few errors we need to fix. Okay, I think it is just a syntax error on the shell link header and environment variable data block. Let's quickly fix those by adding the required struct de decoration. Let's give it a try again. Okay, it looks much better now. Missing references. We should be able to fix this by adding in the required library. A quick Google search will show that we will need the OLE32 library. Let's add the OLE32 library in. Great. The compilation works now. We are able to get the lnkdemo.exe compiled binary program. Let's execute the exe file now. Okay, looks good. So we will need to supply the payload file itself on our Windows machine in order to generate the lnk file. So we will need to copy the 8443.exe metapreter payload file over to our Windows machine so that we can use it to generate the lnk file. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's generate the lnk file now with the program lnkdemo.exe, 8443.exe and legit.lnk. Nice, we managed to generate the legit.lnk shortcut file now. Looking at the target field, it is blank out completely. The author has mentioned that this was achieved by appending 512 space characters to block out the text box completely. Before we execute the shortcut file, let's delete all of the irrelevant files. So let's delete the 8443.exe because we don't need it at all. The entire 8443.exe file should already be embedded inside this legit.lnk shortcut file by itself. So we don't need the exe file at all. Alright, let's execute the shortcut file. Wow, it really worked. We were able to get the reverse shell callback. This was all achieved by just one shortcut LNK file itself. 
is pretty interesting. Alright guys, I will be concluding the video here. I hope you all have enjoyed the content. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The references used in the video will be in the video's description, so be sure to check them out. Also, I have created a few t-shirt designs that are related to offensive cybersecurity, which I personally find them to be a real piece of art. It is also pretty funny, so please feel free to check them out on Redbubble. The link to the Redbubble shop will be in the video's description as well. Thanks all, I will see you all in the next video soon. Bye!